I'm Wolf McNally, Lead Researcher for Blockchain Commons. If you are a developer, system architect, or CIO, then this video is for you. I'm going to give you a high-level visual introduction to the Gordian Envelope format. Gordian Envelope is a smart document architecture designed to fulfill a number of current and emerging requirements for storing and transporting data in ways that are secure, verifiable, and privacy-preserving. We'll start with a conceptual overview to ground you in the concepts upon which Envelope is built. We'll delve into Envelope's architecture, and we'll review a number of the exciting features that Envelope supports in its base specification and as extensions. By the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of the many ways Envelope can be applied to various applications. Blockchain Commons has a wealth of additional documentation, as well as examples of practical use cases for Envelope. Links are in the video description, or you can scan the QR codes that appear throughout this video, like this one. Blockchain Commons is proudly a not-for-profit social benefit corporation, domiciled in Wyoming, but operating worldwide. We have a strong commitment to open source and a defensive patent strategy. Anyone can use or improve our tools, and no one can take them away. We work with developers to publish specifications, reference implementations, and tooling that support secure and compassionate decentralized architectures and tools for digital assets and digital identity. Please help support Blockchain Commons by becoming a sustaining sponsor, GitHub sponsor, or making a BTC Pay donation. So first, I want to explain why we chose Envelope as the central metaphor for next-generation digital smart documents. An envelope is a pretty simple thing we're all familiar with, but envelopes have a lot of capabilities we might easily overlook. We think of envelopes as simple document containers, and that's definitely a primary purpose. Of course, we can write on them. In this sense, envelopes don't just contain documents, they are themselves documents. In fact, the exterior can be as complex as needed, including routing information. The exterior hides the contents, but can also verify the credentials of the sender. Or it can give you just a peek at some of the information it contains. We often think of envelopes as holding only small amounts of information, but the capacity of digital envelopes is unlimited. And that information can easily be encrypted to specific receivers or can be readable by anyone except for parts that are specifically redacted. But even when redacted, you can still verify a document's credentials and signatures. Envelopes can hold goods of monetary value and highly sensitive personal information. Obviously, you want to use envelopes that can keep important things secure. And envelopes can even contain other envelopes from different senders with different credentials and contents. Depending on your application, you might need special purpose envelopes that can combine any of these capabilities in exactly the way you need. Wouldn't it be nice to have a digital envelope that lets you easily do any of these things? It exists right now. Welcome to Gordian Envelope. In this section, we're going to cover a few key concepts you should understand before we get into the details of Gordian Envelope itself. They are cryptographic hash algorithms, elision and redaction, determinism, and deterministic CBOR, or DCBOR. The first key concept for understanding Gordian Envelope is cryptographic hash algorithms. One of the most common and secure hash algorithms is SHA-256. Such functions take an input of any size called the image and produce a fixed size string of numbers called a digest, or hash. Here, we're showing the hexadecimal representation of hashing the text string. With SHA-256, a digest is always 256 bits, or 32 bytes, long. But throughout this video, we'll usually represent hashes not as long strings of numbers, but as unique icons like this, called a life hash. Life hash is another blockchain commons open source tool, and you can learn more about it by visiting lifehash.info. Cryptographic hash functions have a number of useful properties. First of all, they are deterministic. If you put the same image in, you will always get exactly the same digest out. We'll have more to say about determinism later in the video. 
But even the tiniest change in the image, like capitalizing a letter, drastically changes the entire digest. In this case, all but two of the original digits of the digest are different, and the life hash also looks completely different. Big changes in output from small changes in input like this are known as the avalanche effect. You might wonder whether it's possible to reverse the process and somehow use the digest to recover the original image. The answer is no, it's not possible. This property is called pre-image resistance. And a good hash algorithm also has the property that if you know an image and the digest it produces, if you try to find a different image that yields the same output, it turns out that it's impossible. This property is known as second pre-image resistance. Finally, with a good hash algorithm, it's astronomically unlikely for two different inputs to produce the same output. This is called collision resistance. This combination of features makes it possible to use document digests as unique fingerprints. Digests let machines and humans tell at a glance whether two documents are the same or whether a document has been altered somehow. And they are essential for verifying that a document has remained unaltered through transmission, encryption, digital signing, compression, and elision. But what is elision? You've seen documents with black bars over parts of the text. This is redaction, which is the deliberate removal or obscuring of information. In documents, redaction is primarily used for security, privacy, or legal reasons. Elision is a more general term. To elide something is an intentional omission of information without giving a specific reason. For example, information might be elided that is considered redundant or irrelevant for the purpose at hand. Or, a long document might be elided to abridge or simplify it, either to save storage space or target it at a particular audience, hopefully without altering the overall meaning too much. So they're basically the same operation, removing information. But while redaction is about confidentiality and security, elision can be for any number of reasons, including redaction. This is why Gordian Envelope adopts the general term elision, and you can use elision for any purpose you choose. The use of elision will frequently be redaction. For example, the set of information on a typical printed document might be a lot more than is needed for a particular purpose. Digital documents may contain much more sensitive personal information and details than a printed document can hold. And because it's digital, once it's copied, it's very easy to lose control of it. Gordian Envelope is a smart digital document that makes it easy for the holder to elide any part of it, whether for brevity or privacy. Elision upholds the principle of minimal disclosure which is the practice of revealing only the necessary information required for a specific purpose while keeping all other details hidden, thereby reducing the risk of unauthorized access or misuse of the remaining data. The cool thing about elision with Gordian Envelope is that the holder can elide parts of the document that have been digitally signed without invalidating signatures. How does this work? Every part of a Gordian Envelope is a node in a tree and every node in that tree has a unique digest, including the root of the tree, which is the digest representing the envelope as a whole. We call this the envelope's characteristic digest. It is this digest that is signed. Now, when parts of an envelope are alighted, the information itself is removed, but the digests of the alighted data are left behind. So the receiver can verify that the signature is valid without knowing everything that was signed. At a later date, a document holder can choose to reveal more of the document covered by the signature, proving additional claims about the signed content. This is called progressive trust, the process of disclosing more information as it becomes necessary. One important thing to note is that since hash algorithms are deterministic, a simple piece of data, like a field name, will have a unique digest. And the same is true for a person's first name. This means an assertion like this will also have a unique digest. When the assertion is elided, the digest remains. But if the space of possibilities is small enough, then an attacker might be able to guess what has been elided by just knowing the digest. This property is called correlation. There are times when correlation is desirable, 
but sometimes, like in this case, not so much. In a few minutes, we'll discuss a mechanism Envelope provides for eliminating the possibility of this sort of educated guessing at what has been alighted. One concept you'll hear discussed around Gordian Envelope is determinism. This concept is crucial for systems where consistent, reproducible results are necessary, such as in cryptographic applications, distributed systems, and secure document exchange. A deterministic algorithm, when executed with a given input, will always follow the same sequence of operations and produce the same output. Hash functions like SHA-256 are deterministic. Given a specific binary input, the digest will always be the same. Complex data structures like documents can also be designed to maintain deterministic behavior. The basic idea is that two agents separated in time or space, when given the same information, and even when the information is presented in a different order, will arrive at exactly the same encoding, and hence produce the same digest. One example of a deterministic structure is the Merkle tree. Merkle trees are used in blockchain and other cryptographic systems. In a Merkle tree, a set of documents, like transactions, are hashed, and then those first-level digests are themselves hashed together. And this continues until there is only a single digest, the root. Since this process is deterministic, another agent with the same set of transactions will always come up with the same Merkle tree. And if another agent only has the root hash and a transaction, but not the full list of transactions, it can ask another agent that has all the transactions to prove that the transaction is definitely in the tree. The other agent can do this by sending just the minimal digests required to show that the transaction must exist in the block. This is called a Merkle proof. Implementing determinism with popular formats for encoding structured data like JSON presents a number of obstacles. If you want to encode a JSON document such that it produces a deterministic digest, even a tiny change in the placement of white space or how a number is written, changes that have no impact on the document semantics completely change the digest. To use JSON in a deterministic way, a separate process called canonicalization must be applied, which transforms the documents into a specific form. Things like normalizing how numeric values are expressed, how Unicode strings are written, the order in which dictionary keys are listed, and of course, removing all the white space, to finally arrive at a canonical version of the document that can be hashed deterministically. Unfortunately, there isn't a single agreed-upon standard for canonicalizing JSON. Various specifications and libraries exist, but they differ in details regarding how they handle numeric precision, special floating-point values, the normalization of strings, and many other edge cases. Gordian Envelope is designed to support determinism at every level. It's designed around a tree structure, similar to a Merkle tree, in that every node has an associated digest. In an envelope, the leaves of the tree can be any data type, while the internal nodes of the tree provide structure, like grouping a predicate and object of an assertion, or grouping the envelope subject with its assertions. And everything that can have an order, such as the order of assertions, and how numeric values and strings are normalized, is well-defined and handled automatically. Every node in an envelope has a digest, but the only time a digest is actually serialized as part of an envelope are in cases like elision, where the transformation of the document preserves the digest tree. This is how envelope allows elision, encryption, or compression of parts of the document while preserving digital signatures. With Gordian Envelope, no separate canonicalization step is ever necessary. When you encode the same semantics, you reliably get the same digest tree. Many applications don't require determinism, and Gordian Envelope is designed such that if your application doesn't need it, it doesn't cost you anything. In fact, this is an important aspect of our design philosophy for Envelope. You only pay for what you use. Gordian Envelope is built on Seabor, the concise binary object representation. Seabor is a standard data format similar to JSON, but designed for binary encoding, making it more compact and efficient to process. Seabor also offers a richer type system, including a wealth of community-defined tagged data types. Seabor tags are a namespace of numbers that identify data types. 
IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, keeps the registry of CBOR tags. Gordian Envelope and DCBOR have been issued tag 200 and 201, both of which are used in Envelope's formal specification. Since CBOR is a binary format, you can't just open it in a text editor and make sense of it like JSON. But tools and libraries exist for every operating system and programming language for decoding and encoding CBOR. And CBOR defines a JSON-like diagnostic notation, which is human-readable. CBOR also supports binary data directly, eliminating the need for workarounds like Base64 encoding used with JSON. However, like JSON, standard CBOR doesn't directly support deterministic encoding. As a designer of deterministic documents, questions like, is 2.0 the same as 2? And what order should map keys be in are questions that you really shouldn't have to think about or specify. So since determinism isn't an easy goal to achieve, Gordian Envelope is designed to support determinism at every level, starting with DCBOR, deterministic CBOR. DCBOR specifies as rules for how certain kinds of commonly used data like numbers and unicode strings must be encoded to help ensure that the same semantic content always produces the same binary output. Importantly, it also requires that the rules are enforced on encoding and decoding to ensure that only properly encoded DCBOR is processed. Naturally, Envelope and documents created with Envelope further restrict the type of data that is allowed in any particular field. But DCBOR helps reduce the cognitive burden on document designers, thereby reducing the likelihood of costly interoperability errors. Now that we've laid the conceptual foundation for Envelope, let's explore more specifics of Envelope's structure. At its core, Gordian Envelope represents knowledge using a simple yet powerful structure, a subject with a set of assertions about it. Since Envelope is a binary format, its tools provide a human-readable Envelope notation. In this notation, the subject is always first, followed by an optional list of one or more assertions in square brackets. An assertion is a statement about the subject, consisting of a predicate, a property or relationship, and an object, the value or related entity. In envelope notation, the predicate and object of each assertion are separated by a colon. This structure is similar to subject, predicate, object triples used in semantic web technologies like RDF, making envelope familiar to those working with linked data. Here's what a similar document would look like in envelope notation. Think of an envelope as a whole, a subject with an optional list of assertions. Now here's the cool part. Each part of an envelope, its subject, its assertions, and the specific predicates and objects of its assertions are also themselves envelopes that can be as simple as strings, but can also be as complex as necessary, providing for rich metadata and as much complexity as you need for your application. What do we mean by rich metadata? Here's an example of an envelope containing information about a written work. Notice that there is more than one has name assertion, and each of the names of the book contains its own assertion declaring the language of the title string itself. This is the same envelope viewed as a tree. As you can see, envelope is a recursive structure where envelopes contain other envelopes, creating a hierarchical representation of arbitrarily complex information. Each node of the tree and the envelope as a whole are characterized by a unique digest. This is similar to a Merkle tree, but the leaves of an envelope can be any DCBOR data, and the internal nodes provide its structure. But Gordian Envelope's design doesn't limit it to trees. Envelopes can be used to represent everything from simple lists of key-value pairs to collections of related documents containing signed claims, attestations, and selective redactions, to complex, interconnected knowledge graphs. Let's look a bit at the elegant but powerful architecture of the envelope data type itself. At its core, Gordian Envelope is implemented as an enumerated type with just five cases. Leaf, Node, Assertion, Elided, and Wrapped. Every one of these cases can stand alone as a complete envelope or participate in the structure of a more complex envelope. In addition, documented extensions since the envelope base specification add three additional cases, encrypted, known value, and compressed, for a total of eight. 
notice that three of these cases are drawn with a fuzzy border. These are the obscured cases, called that because the original data has been transformed in such a way as to not be directly accessible. These three cases are the only ones that actually declare the digest of the original data. In the alighted case, the original data is entirely absent from the envelope. In the encrypted case, the data is present, but has been encrypted using a symmetric key and the digest of the original data is declared as authenticated data, which means it can be read but can't be altered without being detectable. And in the compressed case, the data has been compressed and the declared digest can be checked by decompressing the data and recomputing the digest. These three transformations preserve the digest tree and make it impossible to tamper with their contents without invalidating signatures. They are also completely reversible. By replacing the original data in the alighted case, decrypting it in the encrypted case, and uncompressing it in the compressed case. In the discussion that follows, text of this kind indicates that any of these eight cases may appear where you see it. So now let's look at the cases in the base specification. We'll come back to the other three cases when we talk about extensions. First, there is the leaf case. Leaves hold any valid DC bore data allowing Envelope to encapsulate a wide range of information types. For example, the Seabore diagnostic notation of a leaf holding a string is just the Seabore string tagged 201, representing de Seabore. In Envelopes, all leaves are tagged 201, and this tag is what distinguishes leaves from the other cases. To make this a complete envelope, just tag the leaf 200, representing Gordian Envelope. That's it. A simple yet complete Gordian envelope that adds only four bytes to the Seabore text string it encapsulates. When this envelope is printed in envelope notation, it just displays as a string in double quotes. In the general case, the tagged DCBOR is displayed in Seabore diagnostic notation. The node case groups a subject, which can be any envelope case, and one or more assertions. The node case forms the backbone of Envelope's hierarchical knowledge representation structure. The CBOR for a node case is simply a CBOR array with the subject as its first element and each assertion as a subsequent element. To ensure determinism, assertions are always sorted in order by their computed digest. In Envelope notation, the subject is displayed before a pair of square brackets with the assertions inside the brackets. The assertions are sorted for easier reading instead of by their digest. The assertion case groups two other envelopes, its predicate and object. Together, the predicate and object make a statement of fact about the subject of the node that contains them. The CBOR for an assertion is just a CBOR map, analogous to a JSON dictionary, with the predicate as the key and the object as the value. Like JSON dictionaries, CBOR maps can have multiple entries, but in envelope's assertion case, it always has exactly one. In envelope notation, an assertion is printed with the predicate, then a colon, then the object. The alighted case is a placeholder for information that has been removed, represented by its digest. The CBOR for the alighted case is a binary string containing the digest of the alighted case. This digest is a cryptographic commitment to everything that the alighted node and its child nodes, if any, contain. In envelope notation, this case is simply displayed as the word alighted. Finally, the wrapped case encapsulates an entire envelope, enabling the addition of meta-statements about the entire nested document structure. Recall that each assertion makes a statement of fact or claim about the subject of an envelope. So adding a new signature assertion to this envelope would only sign the subject. But in this case, we don't want to sign only the subject, but the subject and all its assertions. We do this by first wrapping this envelope in a new outer envelope. Now that the envelope is wrapped, the subject is literally the entire envelope, which currently has no assertions of its own. So when we add a new assertion with our signature, the entire original envelope, including its assertions, are signed. And now, nothing in the wrapped envelope can be altered in its semantics without invalidating the signature. Recall that an envelope case, when tagged 200, becomes a complete envelope. The CBOR for the wrapped case is composed by simply wrapping that in another 200 tag. 
And in envelope notation, the wrapped case is printed by enclosing the indented text of the wrapped case in curly braces. That's it. Now you know the essentials of how Gordian envelope is structured. The specifications for DC bore and Gordian envelope are in the early stages of standardization. They are currently published as IETF Internet Drafts, or IDs, with the aim of publishing them later as RFCs. While we expect these specifications will undergo further refinements on this path, we consider them both to be stable and ready for use. The Internet Draft for DC bore describes the subset of CBOR and a few additional encoding rules we enforce for ensuring determinism at the very lowest levels. This internet draft is the base level specification for envelope. It covers everything we discussed in the previous part of this video in specific detail. The Blockchain Commons Research BCR repo on GitHub contains a growing set of research papers and specifications called BCRs. BCRs are categorized by how far along they are in the research development and standardization process. Many of the more recent BCRs define extensions to the envelope base specification, some of which we'll discuss shortly. In addition to specifications, Blockchain Commons publishes open source reference implementations that are ready for use and to which we invite community contributions. We currently provide implementations of envelope in Rust and SWIP that implement the full base specification as well as numerous extensions. And all our work for Rust is available for immediate use in your projects at crates.io. Finally, in addition to specifications and reference implementations, we publish command line tools and mobile apps that demonstrate, integrate, and deploy our technologies for various purposes. The Envelope command line tool is written in Rust and is available for immediate installation using Cargo. It can be used to construct, investigate the contents of, and extract information from envelopes, either by typing commands directly or in complex shell scripts. Here you see a page from our tutorials showing how to sign a Gordian envelope from the command line. Be sure to watch part two of this video, where we'll go into a number of the important extensions to Gordian envelope that make it even more useful. In the process, you'll deepen your understanding of how Envelope's design offers powerful solutions to privacy and security problems.